Bruce Free, the accounting guy today, and today we're going to talk about depreciation, depreciation expense. Now, when we talk about plant property and equipment, previous video, what we talked about was capitalizing an asset, which meant putting it on the books and not expensing it. But you know, when we put an asset on the books and we capitalize it, we still have a use uh, out of it over its estimated useful life. In other words, how long we're going to use it. All of that plant property and equipment that we have helps us earn revenue. And because of the matching principle, what we have to do is, is we have to ma match the expense of that asset against the revenue or benefits that it's helping us earn. And we call that depreciation. That's all depreciation really is. It's not a cost allocation. It's, it's not a method where we are determining to save up dollars in the future for new equipment. All we're doing is allocating the cost of the asset against the revenue it's helping us earn over the estimated life. Now, there are a number of different methods, and each method as we go over them, I will explain why we use that one particular method. The first method we're going to use today is straight line, which means we'll expense out the same amount of the asset year after year after year. Now, to expense out an asset, I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the following assumptions, and, and that is, is that there's some things we always need. One, we need to know the cost. In other words, how much we capitalized it for. And in this example, that will be $13,000. The second thing we should know is what is its salvage value, also sometimes called in text residual value. That means what are we estimate it's going to be worth at the end of its useful life. Now for generally accepted accounting principles, generally we have a residual or a salvage value. But for income tax accounting, we do not use this. So just keep that in mind when you take your tax class. So in this case, they're saying that we're going to have a value of $1,000 left out of whatever this asset is. And then we, then we have to give it what's called its estimated useful life. And that means how long do we think we'll hold it or we'll have value, we'll have use out of it over, you know, while we own it. In this case, we're going to use five years. All of these numbers will always be supplied to you. The next thing we have to know is its purchase date. That's the final thing. And in this case, it's January 1st, 2008. So what happens then? Well, to depreciate an asset, the formula, as it said, the formula is, is that you take the cost minus the, the residual or salvage value, which in this case is $1,000. So that's going to be $12,000. That's where we get, the, get, the, get our numerator from, our top number. And we take the depreciable cost and we divide it by the number of years. So if I take 12000 divided by five years, it comes out to 2000 $400 per year, okay? And therefore, in each of these years, I would take the $2,400, okay? Now, that's as long as noticed I bought it on January 1st. Let's take a look if we have a partial year for straight line depreciation. Under a partial year for straight line depreciation, the big difference, again, the same same items, cost was 13, the salvage was 1,000, the estimated useful life was five years. But this time the purchase date is May 3rd. Could because really in reality, most companies in today's world do not go out on the first day of the year and purchase an asset. All right, and that would be perfect if they did that because then they had it the entire year. I don't know about you, but I don't usually even get out of bed until the first day of the second month. Now, what's gonna happen is, is, is that I need to do what I, what I have to realize is, again, is, is I still need to realize that it's 2,400 a year, same calculation. The cost minus the salvage value is 12, divided by the number of years is 2,400. But I can't take 2,400 the first year because I didn't have it a whole year. So how, how much do I take during the year? I fraction it out, which accountants call prorating it. And when I prorate something, I fraction it out. Now, we can get real particular on how we do it. We could say, how many days out of 365 did you have? We could say, if you purchase it within the first six months, you take, uh, you take the whole year. Some people do that. And if you purchase it in the last half of the year, you take a half a year. But what we're going to do is what's called just the month of purchase which means that whatever month we purchase it in, we'll take that whole month. And we purchased it in May, May 3rd, 2008. So I don't care if it was May 1st or if it was May 29th, we'll take the whole month of May, and which means that we will have had it 
May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December, which means we will have had it eight months. Now, some students make a mistake and go, well, May is the fifth month. I take five from 12, and that means we had it seven months. But you're leaving out the month of May when you do, you're leaving out that month when you do that. So be very careful when you're, you're doing this thing that you don't leave out a month. Count them on your fingers would really be the best thing. I've even seen people count them on their toes. But I would count them on your fingers, and, and again, just count them right out instead of doing that math. So I have that then. That means eight months out of 12, so I would take the 2,400 times eight twelfths, and I'd come up with $1,600. That would be my amount in the first year because I didn't have it a full year. Second year, I'd take the whole 2,400 because I had it that whole time. And the, each year thereafter, I would take 2,400. Of course, we didn't get $800 of it in the beginning because we only had 16 out of 24. So go ahead and take the 800 in actually the sixth year. That takes care of the last uh, four months that you did not, that you had it in the next year. And again, if I total these up, they will give me $12,000. So that's how you prorate it if you have a partial year for depreciation. That's all for straight line. Next time, double declining balance.